What's up, Outlaw Nation? Let's talk today about the best caliber to go Audad hunting or Barbary sheep. Depends on where you are. I think most people are calling them Audad. All the old school guys are calling them Barbary sheep, but everybody likes them. They're really fun to shoot. And here in the last couple of years, they've really become like a very popular, like if you go try to find an outfitter who's got them, they're freaking booked for like two years. And so if you want that big, you know, you have 30 inch ram is nice, but those big 31, 32, 35 inch rams with the big 14 inch bases, 13 and a half inch bases, and dark chocolate with a lot of character where they've been fighting for years. Oh baby, baby, baby. You gotta put in the time. On a waiting list, not even hunting. All right, but you wanna know, you finally got one. You finally got that outfitter to book you. You finally got some land, and you know you're going after that 32 inch monster. What caliber should you pick? First, you gotta subscribe right there and watch the video to the end so you can know what caliber I think you should pick. All right, guys, I know you've seen, like if you go down the list, just go back through my old videos right here. I've done the best caliber choices because it's that time of year when guys are out grabbing their hunting rifles for their hunts, they're getting all their gear together, they're saving all their money for whatever they need. And we've done one on elk, mule deer, oryx, um, we're doing one today on Audad. We've done one on Brown Bear. So I'm trying to go down the line to give you the tools for everything that you need based off of my experience. Is there better ways? Absolutely. One thing for sure in the hunting world and when it comes to calibers of guns, there's probably 500 ways to skin a cat. All right, first, let me tell you about this hunt that I did this last year in September. So I, <laughs> this is so funny. I go out to with Desert Safaris and I go to the Leoncita. I think it means baby lion or something like that. I don't know. Uh, incredible ranch, like maybe 100,000 acres and just monster Audad everywhere. And they're not easy. Like you don't just drive up and shoot them. So a couple of my buddies went out and Mike and I went out and Mike and I were hunting sheep. They were hunting scimitar oryx. I think it's one of the only places you can get a free range scimitar oryx. I'm gonna try to go back this year and get one of those scimitar oryx because you know, they did have a ban on those. Um, and then they unbanned them. They were on the endangered species list, even though there were so many of them in Texas. But anyway, so they're open back up in Texas. You can shoot them. Uh, it's a great place to go. Don't steal my hunting spot though, because I got to go this year. You guys go next year. All right, so Mike and I are hunting. Sway goes and shoots his scimitar oryx, and he he's waiting on me, and he's we're both hunting together, but he's looking for me. And he finds this, this Audad and he's like, dude, this is a bruiser. Get over here and shoot this Audad. So we were about maybe a 10 minute drive away and they're watching him from about 1500 meters. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, 1100 meters. And so we drive, we catch up to him, we get up to the top. I look at him at 1100 meters and I'm like, I should kill this thing. And I paused and I was like, I only have my 6.5 PRC, it's not gonna do it. So I look over at Mike, I'm like, dude, I. If I had a big gun, I would shoot him, but I don't. I got a six and a half PRC. It's not enough. We got to get to 800. So we go down, sneak up on top of him. Here's where I messed up. Here's where I messed up. This is a failure on my part. I wasn't thinking wind from the time I started to the time I ended. The wind was really blowing about 15, 18 miles an hour. But when I stopped at the canyon, the wind wasn't blowing. So Mike, even though he's going to say it didn't happen, watch him push that, put down here in the comments. Even though he's gonna say it didn't happen, he calls a wind call for me and he gives me, um, I think he gave me aim a, a tenth of a mil and I really needed to aim a half a mil. And so I shoot at like 780 meters, literally right in front of the chest of this, what would have been between 34 and 36 inch bruiser Audad. He was gigantic. Like it looked like you could have fit a washing machine in his horns. It was so big. So when I was done with that, I was, ticked off, man, and I thought my gun was broke. Turns out my gun wasn't broke. It was a GA Precision uh, Gap uh, Sykes Hybrid. I have hammered so many animals with that thing, but it was my fault. I didn't clean the barrel. So I know a lot of you think you don't need to clean the barrel on a precision rifle. You actually do. Normally it's about 250 rounds if you don't use a suppressor. If you do use a suppressor, it's more like 180, right? And I didn't clean it, and so I was, shooting a, a little jacked up group. So I get pissed off, leave my gun behind, think it, like I'm tearing the thing apart, making sure everything's locked tight it on, re-zeroing it, and I'm just pissed off. Like, is this bad ammo? Is it, you know what I mean? Like 
then I went home, cleaned it, and shot a, you know, one whole group with it. So that's what you get for being lazy, I guess. But when I did that, one of the things that ticked me off was I realized if I would have chose a different gun, I would have been able to shoot it at the 1100 and I would have just dropped him like a rock and I would have noticed what the wind was doing because the wind was blowing hard at me right then. That being said, here's what I did. I grabbed Sway's 300 PRC. Now I think I've told you in the past before, one of my favorite rigs to set up is a 20 inch 300 PRC with a CGS Hyperion K silencer on it. The silencer makes it where it's really easy to to not blow your eardrums out and the guys around you. You can communicate well and the animal doesn't know where you are. We have to hike, and I'll tell you this is crazy about this hike. The hike is like down the steepest mountains you can think of, back up this steep old nasty mountain. And uh, I'm gonna throw in some B-roll of this shot right here and you're gonna like it. But I get up there to the top of this mountain and my watch, this is a, um, a Garmin ballistics, whatever it is. My watch literally says activity's too high, take a break. My heartbeat was beating like 180 a minute. I was like, whoo, I'm dying here trying to catch up. But we had seen these Audads, so you know, my adrenaline's pumping. I'm like, screw you, watch, I don't care if I die, I'm killing this Audad. So we get up, sneak up on the Audad, the close, I say sneak up. I was 505 meters away. He was laying down, I was trying to get him to stand up. He didn't, I whacked him standing, laying down. He gets up, runs just a little bit. He would have died from that shot, but I'm a firm believer in shoot and shoot again, especially on a ram, because they are like tough suckers. Yous aren't so bad. A ram is like the toughest animal. He runs again and he gets right even with me at 500 meters, even though he ran probably 100 meters. He gets 500 meters from me again, boom, plug him, rolls down the hill. That's my story of last year's monster. I finally got it back from the taxidermist. He's 31 on one side, almost 14 inch bases, dark chocolate horns, a lot of character. He's a monster. I know you didn't want a story, you want a caliber. Well, I told you two calibers. 300 PRC worked really well. But here's what I did. Because of that shot, when I missed that shot, I said to myself, at 1100 meters, I am going to be able to shoot this Audad if I have this caliber. Stop right now. Tell me what caliber right now in the comments. What caliber did I pick? And go. All right, first I'm gonna tell you how I built the gun. First, I called Altus and I got one of the Manners, the brand new long range hunter stocks. I don't know what color it is, but I got the, the Manners long range hunter stock. It is my favorite stock because it's like an EH-1 that has the ability to put an Arca rail in the tripod. Now, to be honest, since I've had that, I've got that on three stocks now, I think, or four. I don't really use that Arca rail as much as I'd rather just stick it like in a hog saddle just because it's faster. But, oh well, um, I got some dedicated tripods now. I got some really right stuff tripods for this year that I can dedicate to that to see how well it works. But hog saddle has worked great for me over the years. So that being said, especially hog saddle works really well if you have a lot of different guns. So if I'm taking hunters out, I can put them inside and lock them down on multiple different guns where most people don't have an Arca rail. But stopping there, I absolutely, absolutely love that Manners long range stock, the long range hunter stock, because on all of my stocks, I need exactly one finger length to come up. So you'd look at my stock and you'd be like, dude, you didn't even need that cheek to come up. Well, I do. I just needed to come up one, one little, one finger. And how do I set my gun? I don't do it in the prone, because if I do it in the prone, I need it to come up like three fingers, right? If I'm gonna sit down prone on a gun all day, it needs to come up three fingers. But if I'm gonna do it how I'm normally gonna shoot, which is usually on a knee or off a tripod, one finger. So that's how I set my guns up, my scopes with my optical, with my eye, is off of a knee. So I don't do it standing up and I don't do it in the prone, because all three positions call for a different cheek height. That LRH allows you to do that. Okay, so then I got the Bartland barrel. Thus far, the Bartland carbon fiber barrels, I have yet to have one that shoots. This new rifle that I got and that 6.5 PRC that I got from Gap, it prints bug holes, dude, bug holes. Okay, then I chose Terminus Zeus Action. And why I chose the Terminus Zeus Action was because for one time in my life, I wanna be able to unscrew barrels and not have to wait on a gunsmith so I can just change the caliber. Now, I got a Lapua bolt face, but you can change the bolts too, which is, um, that's too much for me, but I just wanna change the barrels when I shoot them out. Do you need to do that? Probably not. 
Why do I say probably not? Because it was written once, and I think this is very true, I think it was in a Field and Stream or something magazine, somebody correct me, it was in one of the magazines that if you got a brand new rifle from your dad when you were 14 years old, by the time you were done shooting, and that was the only rifle you shot, you only shot about 200 rounds out of it in your life. Okay, that's not the case for me. I shoot 250 rounds just building, tuning a load and getting my dope, right? And that's when you get your barrel to speed up and that's, that's how you know that you're gonna be successful every time. So I shoot a gun in the load development, which is one month. I shoot that gun more in one month than most people do in their entire lifetime. I'm not bragging, I'm just saying it's what I do. So I needed a, a way to change a barrel. You probably don't. Once you get this hunting rifle, you probably don't need to change much of it because you're probably not out target shooting just for fun because you got a crazy addiction like me. Uh, I got the new Bix and Andy trigger. Dude, I love that trigger. I love it. I had CGS build it. So CGS built it and they provided the silencer for it. Um, CGS is, Bobby is the salt of the earth. He's the greatest guy ever in this industry that I've ever met. Will absolutely do anything to help you. Will absolutely spend the time that it takes for you to understand something. Just the most humble guy I've ever met. So I buy all my stuff from him. He's like one of my really good friends. I built it in a, tell me what caliber. Pause, tell me what caliber. I'm gonna give you a hint, I'm gonna give you a hint. I know you're like, dude, I'm shooting the new 245 Burger EOL and I'm printing bug holes at 2,850 feet per second, which should be 2,900 feet per second, maybe 2,950, because we know that Bartlett barrel is gonna speed up at about 100 rounds. And it's a 300 Norma with the 245, which is of old, like the 338 Lapa with a 250, right? But it's really getting it, it's flying fast. So I said, when I did the wind, I, so how I choose a rifle is I say, okay, at what feet per second does this bullet open? Well, Burger is like at 1,800 feet per second, it's opening no matter what. So what is my yardage based off my elevation and temperature for that bullet to open? Then what is my poundage? Because like on an elk, I wanna be 1200 foot pounds. And that's kind of where I know my limits are as to that gun actually working and killing well. And then I start doing what is what works very well in the wind. So when you're in the mountains and you have to shoot through different vectors of wind, a 300 grain 338 is like the bee's knees. It works the best. But whenever you might just have two to three vectors of wind, that 245 burger just cuts through them. So that's what I chose. I chose a 300 Norma with a 245 burger. Now, if you said, what about the 300 PRC? It's like the same as a, as a Norma. You're right. If you hand load them, you can make the 300 PRC just dadgum near do everything the Norma does with less gunpowder. But what you can't do is make it do it with a 245 burger. That's why I chose it. I chose the 245 burger. If it was just the 215, I would stay shooting the 300 PRC. But I'm shooting the 245, which cuts through the wind better. And where I'm hunting is this like west, southwest Texas valleys and canyons in the Fort Davis mountains where you're gonna fight the major wind and then the gusts of wind. So that 245, I built it for this year and it is my recommendation. Now, if you don't reload, my next recommendation to you is those big magnums. So I culled, um, I think about 400 Audad this year, this year. This is not including my previous videos where I did it last year. We culled them per the biologist on a ranch in Texas. Like this is what we're like, game management, we're culling them. And I've shot them with a 6.5 Creedmoor a bunch. I've shot hundreds of them with a 6.5 Creedmoor. Shot them with a 260, a 6.5 47. Shot them with a 30 Heart. What I've learned though, is those big rams, that those big magnums really do a lot of damage on them, especially a 30 caliber. The 30 caliber actually, I think breaks them down if you make a bad shot better than the seven millimeter does. Oddly, I normally say that they do them the same. I really like a 30 cal and I like a big Magnum. So 300 Win Mag, um, 300 H&H &H Mag, those, you know, 300 PRC, those are great freaking calibers to pop your dream Audad on. And uh, so that's what I chose. I chose that Norma, um, shooting the 245 Burger. I think the whole gun weighs like 11 pounds, so it's light enough that I can carry it up and down mountains. Um, I have a muzzle brake option on it because I have some hunts out of the country this year that I'm gonna do. And that's the gun that I'm choosing to take because uh, I want the most 
forgiving gun that I can in the wind and in the elevation for shooting long distance on game that I'm paying a lot of money for. All right, so that's where I stand. Go get you a big old Audet hunt. Man, I just got my mount in. They're amazing mounts. Like, they tune your wall up where they look amazing. And shoot a big 30 cal. Shoot a big seven millimeter, something like that. Do you need a 338? Probably not. You know, they're not very big. They're just really tough. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's what I choose for it. And now, if you don't have to make a long shot, if you're shooting on a feeder or something, yeah, 6.5 Creedmoor works. 6.5 PRC works, 308 works but I'm shooting beyond six, 700. And so I want those bigger things so I can be like, you know, the old, if you're old enough, AT&T, reach out and touch somebody. That's AT&T. I don't know, is that a FUD joke? All right, guys, do me a favor, like, subscribe, hit the bell notifications, Outlaw out. Law out.